Hey everyone, it's Soundfont Guy, and today I'm going to tell you a bit about GameVerb. It's a brand new reverb plugin from Impact Soundworks. I'm just going to briefly cover its core features, what it offers, and explore whether it's worth your attention, and more importantly, your money. So let's take a look. All right, so I'm just gonna briefly look at the interface here. So up here you have, this is just a power button, active versus inactive. Input you can change from stereo, uh, left, right, mid, um, mid, left, right, and mid. That's not something I'm gonna get into right now. But uh, yeah, up here you have your preset selection, output gain, A and B, so you can swap back and forth quickly between preset settings. Here you have the sample rate drop down menu where you can change the sample rate. Um, so this is a sample reducer and it's kind of one of my favorite things about this plugin, but I'll get to that in a bit. Yeah, so you can choose your sample rate. By default, everything that goes through this plugin is at 44.1 kilohertz and it has anti-aliasing that gets rid of some of that crackle. This is the, the screen where you select which, which reverb algorithm you wanna use. We'll get deeper into that in a minute. This is the BRR, that's bitrate reduction filter. Um, so this is basically based on the SNES's uh, bitrate reduction filter. I won't dive into the technical aspects of that, but uh, but they've made it available for all the reverbs. So you can still use this function on uh, the PSX and the N64, which is great. Pre-LPF, that's your low-pass filter, dry wet knobs, and then post-LPF, another low-pass filter for the for what comes out. So let's just start with the basic stock SNES reverb that just that is the default setting that the plugin comes with. Okay, so I have this SNES inspired sound font loaded in here. So let's just hear how it sounds. Yeah, that sounds pretty, uh, that sounds pretty great. Now in here, you can click in here and you can see that there are a ton of options and they all come specifically from games. They're all named after the games that they come from. So for example, you could put a, the Mega Man X reverb algorithm or rather the Mega Man X reverb setting through the algorithm and let's try sort of guitar. I don't know why I went straight to Doom there. We also have Donkey Kong Country. Look at all of these options here. That's pretty exciting, right? Let's try Sticker Brush Symphony. That one doesn't really sound like much, but we can turn up the dry wet mix to really hear the difference. And this one isn't really much, but some of them are uh, very, very noticeable. Like, for example, of course, Aquatic Ambience. Pretty understated, but... It's got a pretty cool sound. This is a great little plugin for SNES Reverb. We really don't need to dive too much into that. You have your controls here and uh, you can you can look at the, the presets and there's a wealth of presets to choose from. Um, and you can also do a lot of editing yourself. I wanted to uh, highlight a little function here. So as I mentioned before, this sample rate drop down menu. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna drop this down to the lowest one here. And since we're using the SNES um, algorithm, the SNES, has it's this sort of trademark muffled sound right so i'm going to use this acoustic piano which is from uh, flex and i'm going to drop this all the way down and leave the anti-aliasing turned on and we get something like this which is a pretty cool sound and the difference here is that you have this anti-aliasing button which is more or less what causes that muffling sound. If we turn this off, you can hear that there's a lot of artifacting, sort of like a distortion in the in the high end, some buzzing. This is a, a natural byproduct of uh, low sample rates, and particularly in downsampling. I cannot stress enough how great having this anti-aliasing button is because you can really squeeze the Super Nintendo sound out of just about any sound um, just by using this sample rate uh, drop-down menu and this button turned on. And if you want an even more authentic sound, 
switch this over to either mono sum or left or right or mid. Anything but stereo, basically. I'll choose right for now and we'll do this. Yeah, that's a great authentic sound. The N64 reverb algorithm, I believe, is the first of its kind. And the reason for that is that the Nintendo 64 didn't actually have a built-in reverb capability, so reverb was sort of programmed into each game individually. Um, there were some very unique solutions that they, that they used back then to create that effect. So let's just try this out and hear how this sounds. I personally love this sound. It's not that it's necessarily that different from from any general delay effect that you might find, but it is built from the ground up with a lot of love and a lot of passion, and it's, it's a very authentic recreation. I can't really say too much more about the N64 reverb without diving into a more, uh, more technical video, but that's not really the point of this. But let's check out Ocarina of Time. Pretty cool, right? Let's turn the sample rate back up. Yeah, I really like that as well. Now, let's come over to the PlayStation Reverb. This one is potentially my personal favorite of the three reverb algorithms, and that's partly because the PlayStation's reverb was so unique and, and different for its time, and even now, there really isn't anything out there that, that quite sounds the way that this does. It has a sort of tinny, sort of metallic sound to it, and it's kind of unmistakably PS1 in nature. So to test this one out, I'm going to use a sample pack that I've made called uh, Solid Guy, which is just a bunch of sounds and instruments inspired by the original Metal Gear Solid on PlayStation 1. So let's try out the string ostinato with the room preset, and then we'll jump into some other presets too. This one is Studio Small. Studio Medium. Now I'll try out a choir, and I'll try it with the Hall preset. As you can tell, that it's a very authentic sound. You really can't get this, uh, can't get any closer to what the the PSX reverb sounded like. I have to say that between the three of these, the PSX is probably my favorite. And I think what makes this plugin stand out is just how many different options you have. The PSX doesn't have as many presets as the others do. However, the presets that are bundled with this plugin are identical, indistinguishable from the presets that were bundled with the PS1 itself. In fact, if you ever put a CD, like an, a music CD, into a PlayStation and played it back, um, you actually had the option to, on, in some PlayStations, I'm not sure if every console had this um, option, but you could apply this reverb to your own music. You could be listening to Britney Spears and apply the PSX reverb to it. It was pretty cool. And this is a very faithful recreation of that. So now I'm just going to play a little tune that I that I put together um, using my Solid Guy Metal Gear Solid inspired sound sample pack, um, and this will feature the the game verb um, in various ways, just so that you can hear how it sounds in action. I have about maybe five or six instances of it running right now. So let's take a listen.
As you can see, to say nothing for my skills as a composer, but to say a lot for the game verb as a plugin, it sounds great. I think it really makes, it can make just about anything sound authentic. You can use any plugin, any sound library, any sound font, put it through this, and it'll sound like more or less like the system that is selected in this little window here. I think in terms of pros and cons, pros are there are a lot of great functions in here. Um, I haven't even begun to dive into just how deep this plugin goes. There's a whole geek mode for those of you who are really, really into that stuff. Um, which I'm sure you'll you'll greatly enjoy. I personally would have preferred there be a um, something like these where there's a low pass filter. I would have liked a high pass filter as well, even though I do know that um, that that wouldn't be authentic. I think that just having that in there, because with today's mixing standards, a low pass filter would be really helpful. Now, that's not to say that you can't just add one into your chain and do a low pass filter here. Um, but it would have been a nice little quality of life improvement. But the plugin stands without that very, very, very well. It's currently about $50, I think, $50 USD. Yeah, there it is. So $49 USD, and I'm, I assume that's before tax. And I have to say that for that price, this is definitely worth it. However, if you don't have that kind of money, I'm gonna offer you a few alternatives that can do some of what this plugin can do. So first and foremost, there is a plugin called PSX Reverb that has all of the same presets for the most part with uh, this extra one pipe. I'm not sure if that's in game, bro. But it has, it basically emulates the PSX, the PS1 reverb algorithm in a way that sounds indistinguishable to me from game verb. It sounds just about the same. The only option, the only uh, downsides to this are number one, the interface, as you can see, is very obtuse. The The other downside is that there is a lack of, of sort of wet dry capability. Like I would like to be able to control the wet and dry signal a little better, but it is completely free. So that is an option. And you can get it right here at this website. This, this GitHub page, I'll share a link in the description. And uh, that's this is a great alternative um, for if you want the PSX style reverb for free. And before we get to the other reverbs, I'll just say the sample rate thing, any sample reducer will do. There is a free one that is simply titled sample reducer. You can get this online totally for free. It's not as precise as this, where you can just pick the sample rates that were most commonly used on these three platforms, but you can play with it and sort of bring it down to pretty close, right? So let's have a look here. So I'll just put this choir here, okay? And game verb. So we'll bring this down to 22.05, and then we'll drag this down to like somewhere more or less similar. Okay, now in game verb, with anti-aliasing turned off, it sounds like this. And in Sample Reducer, it'll sound like this. So it's fairly similar. Um, the main difference here is that I left the reverb function on. Largely ind indistinguishable here. Now, where it really gets different is the anti-aliasing. Because this anti-aliasing is what's going to keep that fuzziness from coming through. Um, so if we bring this down to... 110.25, and we'll bring this down to something similar. Good enough. Now you can hear that buzzing sound, right? That's through game verb. And then this is through sample reducer. And depending on which mode you use, this one I believe might have an anti-aliasing filter in it already. Mode two is a little bit more raw. But in the event that you use a sample reducer that doesn't have any sort of anti-aliasing function in it, you can just add yourself a, uh, a low-pass filter. Any low-pass filter will do. The only thing is that in game verb, what I love about game verb is that the anti-aliasing is automatically adapted to whatever the sample rate is. So you don't have to mess with a low-pass filter and try to dial it in just right. Um, however, sample reducer is free, and if you have a, a DAW, then your DAW probably has a filter of some kind, low pass filter that you can apply to that. Another thing is of course the N64 and SNES reverbs. So if you're looking for a an alternative to these, one really good one is this one here called SNES Delay. So it's a free VST that more or less emulates the, the reverb of the SNES. Um, 
basically indistinguishable from what you'll find in game verb. But again, it's it's separate. It's not bundled with anything. Here's a uh, SNES delay in action. And comparing it to game verb. It's pretty similar. Now, the only thing that you'll be missing with SNES delay, of course, is that it has it doesn't seem to come with any presets. That said, there are a lot of options that you can make happen just within this little plug in here. And the same can be said for the N64. So basically the Nintendo 64 and the SNES, their reverb algorithms are just delay. So you can use SNES delay for N64 or SNES stuff, or really any delay plugin will do. You'll just have to do a little bit of extra work to make it sound authentic to the console that you're trying to emulate. So that about sums it up. All right, I'm ready with my pros and cons list. So. Pros, faithful, authentic recreation of all three reverb algorithms, all bundled into one very lightweight plugin. Uh, there's a wealth of presets, many of which are taken straight from the games that we love. There's near infinite customizability, low system requirements. I actually ran a benchmark where I had 20 instances of game verb open and running at the same time, and I barely broke two gigs of RAM. Another pro is additional functions like sample rate selection and bit rate reductions to really push your music closer to the realm of authenticity. Um, relatively affordable, depending on your use. I personally will be using this quite a bit, so $50 is a great price for me. Cons, uh, many of these sounds can technically be achieved in other plugins. Limited use. I'm not sure what else this could be used for outside of retro video game music and retro game inspired audio. Um, if you have ideas about what else they could, this could be used for, um, let me know in the comments. I, I would be really interested to see creative uses of this plugin. Another con is the price point. I know I mentioned this in the pros section, but I want to point out that a lot of the community of folks who are making music inspired by retro games may not have $50 to drop on something like this. Do I think this plugin is worth the asking price? Yes, absolutely. I just wanted to draw a bit of attention to the fact that money can be a genuine hurdle or barrier for a lot of people that want to make music. And for those of you to whom this applies, I see you. And please remember to check the description for free alternatives to this. All in all, I think this is a great plugin. It's worth $50 if you have it to spend. A lot of love clearly went into this and a lot of work. Um, it's It really nails the authentic, I've been saying that word a lot, I know, but a very authentic SNES, PSX, and N64 sound. You can really turn just about anything that you have into a retro game instrument now just by feeding it through this. I really can't praise this plugin enough. I really think it's great. Again, there are some free alternatives, but none of them carry quite the breadth of options and functionality that this one has. I ultimately, this is this is getting two thumbs up, two sound font guy thumbs up. That's not a thing. I'm saying that for the first time today, but either way, two thumbs up before you go. Um, if you could like and subscribe and check out the sound font guy coffee shop. So uh, this is the shop where I upload all of my sound fonts, sample packs, things like that, most of which are free and all of the paid versions are inexpensive and also have a free version. Most recently, I did the Silent Guy sound pack that you can see here and the Solid Guy sound pack, which are inspired by Silent Hill and Metal Gear Solid, respectively. A lot of love and labor goes into these, and um, I, if you have it, if you're using it, please share the music that you make with it because it's really fun for me. Um, last but not least, Consider joining the Patreon, where you can get lots of stuff early, get updates, and a lot of exclusive content that is just for patrons, or if you just want to support the channel and what I'm doing. Now, for the first time on the SoundFont Guy channel, I would like to officially thank my patrons. So, I'm going to call you all out by name. Devox, thank you. Justin Hawes, thank you. And Selena. Thank you very much. The three of you are big supporters. I really greatly appreciate you very, very much. Um, and I can't wait to show you more in the future.